Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Dharna Noor, joining you from Baltimore. Last week, 30, 31 American scientific organizations, such as the American Public Health Organization and the American Meteorological Society, presented a letter to the US Congress. The letter asserted that research shows climate change to be a real threat and that greenhouse gas emissions are the primary driver. Signatories urged Congress members to take action on climate change by working to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and supporting global efforts to adapt to, quote, address unavoidable consequences for human health safety, food security, water availability, and national security, among others. Joining us to speak about this letter is Dr. Rush Holt. He's the chief executive officer of the American Association for the Advancement of Science, the organization which spearheaded this letter. He previously served as a member of the U.S. House of Representatives for 16 years. He's also a seasoned physicist. Thanks so much for joining us. Good to be with you, Darna. So, Rush, could you speak a bit about the letter and perhaps also um, about the, the timing? Uh, what did you hope to accomplish with this letter to Congress, uh, and why did you choose to send it now? Well, there was nothing special about the timing, except that uh, the uh, scientists all over the world, including scientists represented by these uh, 31 organizations, have continued since 2009 to collect data, to reanalyze the data that was available to us then, and to uh, form a, an even stronger consensus that the climate is changing, that human activity is largely responsible for that, that, it, that the effects are costly and deadly, and that there probably are some things we could do about it now if we act promptly. And it was, uh, it, so over these you know, six or eight years now, um, it is the compiling of more data the further analysis of the data and the realization that not enough action has occurred that led these organizations, plus some new organizations, joining the 18, uh, the 13 organizations who joined the 18 from 2009 in sending this letter. The letter is similar to the letter of 2009, but with uh, greater consensus, greater confidence, and greater urgency. And can you speak a bit about the reception of the letter um, in Congress and generally the political attitude amongst U.S. Congress members toward action on climate change, both to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and also uh, uh, supporting adaptation methods? Well, I can't say much about what is going to be the result of this letter. Uh, Congress has been you know, debating appropriations and gun safety and a number of other things, uh, not devoting much attention to climate change uh, since we sent it. Um, I do know that over the years, uh, a lot of people have uh, either wished it away or uh, criticized the scientists for various un usually unspecified reasons uh, and done nothing. Um, this is, this is serious. Uh, we know the uh, Earth has warmed on average, but even more important than the average changes, we are seeing a lot of specific changes uh, uh, from uh, hour to hour, day to day, month to month. Uh, so it's not just, uh, well, let's get used to a few degrees warmer weather. We're seeing that uh, that ecosystems are being upset, that fisheries are um, becoming unproductive, that uh, agriculture is having trouble keeping up, uh, that uh, tidal surges in storms uh, are, are uh, un unmanageable. Uh, so there are certainly things that are happening from the inaction, uh, and it looks like uh, the uh, these instabilities, these nonlinearities, or in other words, the uh, fluctuations, which is another word for storms and, and, and uh, tidal surges and so forth, uh, are going to become much worse than we've seen. Um, it is possible, and that's as far as I think most of the scientists involved would go, to say it's possible 
that by curtailing emission of greenhouse gases now, like starting immediately and for the next years, uh, we could uh, reduce, um, probably not eliminate, but reduce these damaging, dangerous, deadly uh, events. And you mentioned there that despite uh, this consensus among scientists, um, and even uh, when confronted with the possibility of actually being able to, um, in some ways, prevent the damage done by climate change, often uh, these scientists are sort of uh, singled out and not treated with very much seriousness. Um, this is in some ways demonstrated by uh, this past Wednesday, there was a House and Energy Commerce Committee hearing, and Republican Ohio Congressman Bill Johnson called the EPA, quote, un-American. Uh, he sort of seems to be borrowing the language here from the McCarthy trials of the 1950s, and fittingly, many have called the attitude towards environmentalists and environmental scientists by Congress a sort of witch hunt. Um, is there any truth to this? Is there a witch hunt happening? Well, I, I would say the authors of this letter, these 31 scientific societies that represent uh, millions of people, uh, scientists and those associated with them, directly or indirectly, um, are, are very careful to say that this is uh, based on the evidence, based on the analysis of the evidence, um, it is not to be uh, used for partisan political purposes. It is um, uh, not presented in, in, that, in that sense. Uh, you know, one of the things that we at the American Association for the Advancement of Science would like to communicate to people at large is that um, scientists, science is by nature non-authoritarian. It's not dogmatic. We are not trying to tell the world this is the way it is and you'd better listen to us. We're saying we have been looking at the evidence actually for a hundred years. It goes back a hundred years that people began to say, yes, climate di carbon dioxide could be a blanket over the earth uh, and provide warming. Fifty years ago, uh, scientists began uh, to uh, issue really warnings that there could be uh, real changes because of human emissions of, of climate change. But it's not because they suddenly found the truth. It's because they be they continued to look at the evidence. And at first they said, gee, this is interesting. And then they said, oh, wow, something's really happening. Now it's getting to the point where scientists are saying, uh-oh, uh, it is, um, uh, you know, th there isn't a, uh, a political ideology or for that matter, even a scientific ideology that's being advanced here. It is our best understanding of the evidence based on uh, many uh, independent paths of, of analysis uh, and of that data and continually uh, and continue continuous new data uh, that lead us to say that so you know it's it's hard for these societies to uh, what tell Congress uh, uh, how to balance their uh, uh, competing, political interests, but it is for us to tell them our best understanding of what the evidence says about what is happening, why it's happening, and where it is likely to go. And it's pretty clear to everybody who looks at this with an independent scientific mind that it's likely to go in a bad way. Uh, and. Uh, in response to all you've just said about the presentation of this evidence, um, I'd just like to sort of um, get your thoughts on um, something that we read earlier. Uh, so in the Scientific Americans article uh, on this letter, um, John Foley of the California Academy of Sciences, Scientists um, seemed to say that, you know, he said that he thought the letter wouldn't be effective because, uh, and this is a quote, we're being bad scientists, not in how we look at our climate data, but in how we look at our communication data. Uh, so essentially saying that, the, that presenting the same information again isn't the answer. Um, so is poor communication on the part of the scientific community really the or a problem? It must be because, you know, scientists have been coming to
to this conclusion with more and more confidence over the last decade or two. And yes, there have been in many places in the world uh, a kind of strong positive response to, to this with government leaders saying, uh, let's get to work and starting to do something, but not so much in the United States. So I think that surely means that there has been some uh, failure of communication here. Uh, in other words, the communication hasn't been motivating enough. Uh, I, I suppose some people out there are saying, well, those are good studies. Isn't that interesting? Um, uh, we need more people to say, oh, those are good studies. Uh, this is evidence that's been well handled, uh, well considered. Let's get to work. Uh, so, uh, uh, yes, you're right. That's a, um, a communications challenge. Um, and the organizations that signed uh, collectively represent millions of scientists across the U.S. And it's clear from the letter that among scientists, there's a, a clear consensus that climate change is not only real, but also driven by human activity. Um, but, I mean, what do you think the consensus is amongst the general U.S. population? Um, is, so is there, and I guess, and uh, put another way, is it actually un-American to demand uh, environmental and specifically climate action? Um, is this something that most Americans would support? Well, surveys show that a, that a majority of Americans, I'm sorry that it's not a unanimity of Americans, but a majority of Americans think that climate change is real, uh, that it is costly and even deadly, and that we should be doing something about it. I think maybe they are less confident that we can do something about it. Um, but uh, it, it's, you know, many, many millions of Americans uh, who get it. Uh, and some in their own ways are trying to cut back on emission of greenhouse gases and so forth. Um, you know, the president has been very strong on this, uh, carried a strong statement and strong delegation position to Paris uh, in, in past months. Uh, in Paris, most of the countries, uh, all the major countries of the world, made pledges to do something about this. Now, the pledges are not um, strongly enforceable. Uh, and even altogether, those pledges probably wouldn't be enough, scientists think, to, uh, to stop the, the damaging effects of climate change. Nevertheless, it's a big deal that all of these nations made a commitment, acknowledging that we've got a real problem and that they were going to do something about it. So that's good. Um, but there certainly are many Americans who don't understand the urgency of it or are uh, imagining that they see dissension in the scientific community when, in fact, there's really quite good consensus. Or people who, for their own personal or reasons or special interests, uh, uh, don't want to make changes, uh, which would be necessary to deal with uh, a problem of this urgency. Okay, and uh, we'd like to continue to speak a bit uh, more about um, what kinds of changes would be required um, and which ones are being made, uh, where there's progress being made and where there still is work to be done. Um, so we hope that you'll join us again uh, in a second part of this interview. Thanks for joining us. Be happy to. Thanks. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.